Good morning, good morning guys. Today I'm gonna be working on getting the shower pan going, so getting the first, uh, the first main step of the shower pan, which is to get the first layer of mortar down. Then I'm gonna let it cure for a few days. So today is Wednesday, I'll come back on Friday and then actually lay down the shower pan liner. And the reason why I'm doing this before the, uh, before the drywall goes up is because the drywall, well they're not actually gonna use you know regular drywall in the bathroom here, they're gonna use, it's a product called Dense Shield. And the dent shield will actually go over top of the shower pan liners. And that will kind of like fill up this area and then it'll go up. And then the dent shield comes over top of it. And the reason for that is if moisture were to get um, behind the finished tile, which it can most definitely do, it can go through the grout pretty easily. Uh, once it goes past that, then it can, it'll hit the dent shield and I'll actually, and I'll probably paint on like a, a rubber kind of like guard on the, uh, on the dent shield and it'll hit that surface and then from there it'll work its way into the shower pan. Um, but it's really important to have that dent shield or you can also use, I think it's called like Dura Rock, which is like a concrete backer board. Um, you could use that as well. And that just goes over top of that shower pan liner. It's just one of those order of action kind of deals. So you just want to do things in the right order so that you get, uh, so that you get the best result out of it. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. Um, so I'll get the curb going in first, then I have to drill a hole through the floor here in order to, uh, in order to place the, uh, the drain in the floor, and then we'll just go from there. Something that's really handy dandy with having a 3D SketchUp of this house is that I can see where the uh, the cross beams are going um, in the uh, in the subfloor framing. So I know just to the right of this stud going up, I know the cross beam it goes across like this. So when I'm drilling my hole for the drain, I think I'm just going to go um, just to the right of that, just about right here, and I know I'm not going to be drilling in. To any of the cross beams or anything like that. So having this 3D model of the house, very, very nice. Before I use like the really big drill uh, to drill a hole in this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, just gonna drill kind of like a test hole um, in about the area where I want it to be. And I'm just gonna check below the house and just make sure that I'm not gonna be running into any of the beams on the trailer that are on the bottom side of it. Rather than trying to mess around with the plumbing underneath the trailer um, with some like really awkward plumbing pieces and shit. So we'll just uh, drill a test hole straight through and uh, see where that pops out um, below the trailer. All right, let's, uh, let's go check it out down below. All right, so we can see the hole pop down right there. It's a little bit close to this one. Um, not like super, super close, uh, but what I'm probably gonna do is just move the hole or where I drill down just a little bit towards, the, uh, towards that side of the house there. And then the drain pipe should fit down here. No problem. So this is the drain that we're gonna be installing. This is a standard adjustable uh, shower drain that's used for like mortar and tile. And then we have a three and a half inch hole saw and that should, um, and that'll fit this part, the thickest part of the drain um, so it can sit nice and flush with the, uh, with the subfloor here. So we're just gonna go ahead and drill it right through. And there we go, we got a hole through the floor. And so you can see here, if I'm just pointing straight down, the pipe is gonna miss that stuff down there. Just because of these little knobbies right here, I just gotta notch out a little bit out of the subfloor, and then this will sit nicely flush against the floor. Uh, so the next thing for the shower pan here, what I'm gonna be installing is a piece of tar paper. This is gonna act as a moisture barrier between the first level of mortar and the subfloor. So they're gonna be separated. So with this moisture barrier here, the mortar is going to, when it's, when it's curing, it's going to retain uh, more of its moisture uh, because the moisture in the mortar isn't gonna get sucked up by the subfloor. Um, so it's gonna be able to cure properly. So we're just gonna get this cut and uh, put into place. All 
All right, so we've got the tar paper down, and then I cut a piece of this uh, steel mesh here. So this is, um, I don't know, it's just some kind of steel mesh that I got at Lowe's. So that's gonna sit on the tar paper here. This wire mesh is gonna kinda act like, I guess you could say like rebar almost in a way, just to kinda stiffen up and secure the first layer of mortar um, to, the, uh, to the ground here. Uh, what I have to do is just cut a hole for the drain pipe in the mesh here. And once I get that, then I'm going to take some more of the mesh and, and I'm gonna wrap it around this curb here. Um, because I'm gonna put some mortar on this as well, and that'll just help the mortar like actually stick to the uh, to the curb. So with the galvanized steel uh, mesh in place, uh, next thing that I can work on is getting the uh, the first layer of uh, floor mud in there. So this stuff is called floor mud mortar. This is the stuff that's recommended to be used with doing what I'm doing here. So like with most of the things that I'm doing with this house, I'm learning all this stuff kind of like as I go, just by watching YouTube videos or by reading blogs. I'm basically following the instructions, like the step-by-step -step instructions on this one blog post. So the next thing that we're gonna be doing is preparing the uh, the floor mix. So this is a 50 pound bag of this mortar stuff. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix it in a five gallon bucket, um, just because I don't have like a wheelbarrow or anything like that. So I'm gonna mix it in there. Then I'm just gonna start applying it into the shower pan there. But the main thing with this first layer of mortar is that you want everything at about a 2% slope towards uh, towards the drain there. So it's really important for this first layer of mortar that everything you know slopes down to the drain at about a 2% slope, just because everything that's gonna be going on top of that first layer of mortar, which is gonna be the shower liner, the rubber membrane, and then there's gonna be another layer of mortar, and then the tile on top of that. So all those things you obviously you want to slope down to the drain, so that's why it's really important for this first one um, to be sloping in the correct way. So the instructions for making really good mud is to just add enough water until the mixture uh, starts to really hold its shape. So you don't want a wet mixture because I think that is much more prone to, uh, to cracking. So really, really dry mortar seems to be what is gonna be best for this application. All right, let's mix this, uh, this mortar up. So just before I get the mortar down, I'm using some of this Quick Seal Plus. So this is a kitchen and bath adhesive sealant. So I'm putting this on the bottom of the drain and I'm just gonna set this on top of the drain hole and I did cut away some of the asphalt paper here so that this would be making contact uh, directly with the subfloor. So this should just help hold this down into place and uh, so it's not gonna be you know popping up or moving around as much. Um, I probably could have used any type of construction adhesive um, but I just had this stuff available. So I've got like a 50 pound bag of this shit here. I don't know if I'm gonna need the entire 50 pound bag. So I'm gonna pour in maybe like half of it, mix it all up and uh, see how it goes. So this is a pre-mix, but um, you should still mix it around anyways, just so that you make sure everything in there is uh, nice and uh, mixed. All right, so I'm gonna start adding in some of the water. I'm just gonna slowly add it in, mix it in, uh, just so that I'm not getting too much uh, going on in here. I'm sure there's probably a much easier way of doing this, but uh, this is how we're gonna be doing it. If I had a wheelbarrow, this would be a lot easier. So the consistency that I'm going for is like, it should hold its shape but there shouldn't be any like excess water when you squeeze it. So I think I'm right at about where I want it to be. So it seems to be uh, pretty solid and there's enough water in there, but there's not too much water. I think it's easier just to mix it with my hand than the shovel.
All right, so I've got the first layer of mortar in the, uh, in the shower pan, it is done. So I'm gonna let that set and cure for a couple days. I'm gonna come back, put the shower liner in, uh, get that thing situated, and then we're ready for drywall. I think I'm just gonna take a little bit of a break, get some water, clean everything up, then I think I'm gonna start getting some of this uh, plywood on the end wall there, and I'll explain why in, uh, in a few moments. So on this back wall, we're gonna be installing some of that uh, engineered wood flooring, so like some of the click lock flooring, and that's gonna act as our backsplash. It's also gonna kinda be like an accent wall, it's gonna be different from all the other walls. And the reason for the half inch plywood is that um, if I need to get a couple of finishing nails in to hold any of the pieces in place while I'm installing it, then I'll be able to do that. I'm gonna use some construction adhesive to hold the flooring up against the wall, but if I need to get like a nail in there just to hold things into place, um, then I'll be able to do that because I'll have like a good solid backing. On top of that, there's gonna be a couple of shelves that are gonna be located up here. Um, I don't know exactly where they're gonna be going just yet. So again, nice to have some solid backing on the wall there um, so that I can just screw them and I don't have to worry about trying to hit like a stud or anything like that. I can just kind of screw it wherever I want to. And the back, uh, and the back kitchen cabinets are gonna be going here as well. Um, so in order to install those, Again, really nice to have some backing. So that's why I'm gonna be installing the half inch plywood on this back wall. All right, so I just uh, quickly finished the wall. I'm gonna head on home because I'm sweating like you wouldn't believe. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace.